I'm going to start by kind of going down art history a little bit here. Um, so art has for a long, long time sort of been a way for humans to, or humankind to sort of record history is the way I think about it. And that's one of the major contributions that I feel that it's made. Um, that contribution has been through uh, narratives and allegories, and they're usually done through painting and sculpture, or traditionally it was done through painting and sculpture. Um, for generations and generations, that's now been passed on, and that's, these stories have been passed on. And now they live in museums and in private collections all over the world. But essentially, they, they, they tell the story of mankind through this particular visual language. And so, <clears throat> at the turn of the, uh, turn of the modern era, when modern art began, we started to see a shift. There was a lot, of, there was a lot less um, art based in religion, and a lot more and there was more work being done by artists uh, about their personal lives, about their social surroundings, about w what I'm sort of considering them trying to capture the zeitgeist, the spirit of their time. And so um, not only were they doing that, but I also feel like they were trying to immortalize themselves, immortalize their sort of social surroundings, and perhaps even their patrons. <laughs> so um, I'm happy to say that that tradition has carried on. Um, at least in my own studio practice it has, and certainly feel responsibility as, a, as an artist to sort of capture the spirit of my times. And I'm showing this slide briefly. This is an older piece of mine that I hope embodies that sort of spirit. It's a, it's a sculpture that where I've placed myself in it as a, as a farmer, as a Colombian farmer, dealing with issues that were going on in Colombia at the time around farming there. Um, so I started to think about how since art was a way to keep record for a long time, how does art have that capability today? Today, um, because of all the all the other outlets that we have, you know, the internet, TV, movies, all these things, is there a way for it to um, to do that? Because if you start to think about it, every single moment of every single day, it's con we're constantly recording our history. I mean, it's happening right now. Um, everything from the minutia <laughs> and the ridiculous to the monumental, the BP was. So where does art sort of fit in there? And I start to think of this age as the age of connectivity, the age of exchange, the age of globalization. Um, and I started to ask myself, well, why is it that we're constantly connected to Facebook, Twitter? We're chatting, we're updating, we're posting, we're, 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 we're retweeting. Why is that? And I started to think about the topic of today, which is you know openness and uh, and privacy, and I started thinking that we're we're perhaps surrendering our privacy to be open with one another, and I think that's symbolic. I think that's symbolic of what what may be to come in the future, where we sort of become part of a, a collective consciousness, where we all are sort of connected through uh, our virtual existence, and so. With all these sort of thoughts percolating, I met Sean Fanning, and, and, and we both sort of uh, started to talk about these ideas, and we thought about perhaps collaborating and putting together a, a work of art, a project that would sort of embody this a bit. From the get-go, I knew I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to create a sort of cybery, sci-fi type of sculpture. I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want it to be too futuristic looking. I didn't want it to look like this in any way, essentially. I wanted to sort of maintain an aesthetic of, of, of contemporary art. And so um, that gave birth to the Al One project. Um, Al, One, Al One is a, is a traditional sculpture. He is rendered in this sort of classical realism, and well, partially in classical realism, and then partially done in, in the vector language. And the vector language is the language that computers use to break down form. And I'll show slides of, uh, of that. This is just a Photoshop rendering uh, of, of, of it right now. So um, I was hoping that by sculpting it this way, it would sort of um, it would serve as the metaphor between reality and virtual reality and us sort of fusing the two together. Um, behind Al One, behind the sculpture, there's a series of monitors and in the shape of a crucifix. And each one in the diagram here uh, shows a social media site. And what's going to be happening is that 
Al One will be streaming his life via the net. Um, he, has a, he has a real existence and the physical presence, but he will also have his virtual existence. And so you, he will be able to, you'll be able to befriend him on Facebook. He will, he will be able to accept your reply. He's going to be, he's going to have all the behaviors of a computer, so he'll be able to record video. He's going to be able to um, post it on YouTube. And what we're trying to do is develop the software so that this interaction between audience and sculpture happens seamlessly. So you approach the sculpture, you befriend it on Facebook, and that instantly appears. You'll be able to send him text messages. You'll be able to... Um, we're trying to do some interesting, innovative stuff where you'll be able to approach the sculpture, ask it a question, and it's going to go into its database or its sort of social network and sort of retrieve an answer based on the collective. And then that will appear on the, on the, on the, ba on the monitors and that will stream downward. So um, we're also trying to do fun things like when he falls asleep, the way a computer falls asleep, a uh, playlist is going to start to play. And that playlist is, again, built off of his social network. So what's the point of Al1? Well, uh, the point of Al1 it's, is, to me, is that we're heading towards a future where we're alone, essentially. Al1 is alone. But he's built off of his personality, his virtual persona, and his real life persona are basically built off of his, his connections and his relationships via the web, via the people that interact with him and continue to follow him over time. Um, so we're also keeping the project completely open source, which is going to be interesting for the future or the evolution of the piece. Um, we want to be able to allow people to, to sort of change his behavior over time or alter how, how he responds. So um, it's exciting. It's still a work in progress. We're, we're, barely, we're, we're at the point where we're still building the, 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 the software and the hardware for it. And right now, if you were to follow, if you go onto his Facebook or his Twitter, you can you can see what he's been posting, which is basically how he's, been, how he's being created right now. He already has a Twitter feed that's talking about ideas of singularity and uh, about nanobots and about the future. So here's, uh, here, here's what you'll find if you, if you find him right now on Facebook. And so this slide right here kind of describes what I was talking about, the vectorization, trying to find the, that, that balance between reality and the virtual life. So, um, and this is, this is him ready to be molded and cast in, um, in New York. And so we're hoping to launch the project somewhere in about uh, early 2011. Um, and if, for more information on Al1, you can check out his, any of his uh, social networking sites, or you can go to my website and uh, there's a link to him where you can, you can follow him on anything that you want, his Flickr account, his YouTube account, anything like that. So, um, Again, thank you for inviting me, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys find out one and, and, and follow the project. Thank you.